Welcome to the Seth Herman experience. We got we got a special guest. Hey, it's me, Michael Castillo. No one knows me. Famous producer uh. for uh, Silver Beach Cinema or whatever, whatever it was called. <laughs> the downfall of Jamestown. Yeah. Yes. Um, That's the so thing. Today I mean. we are here to discuss the reopening of Broward County Public Schools. <laughs> so. so uh, you were gonna say so? Current, current, current just statistics for Broward County. How do you, how do you think this is gonna turn out? What do you think? I you think, think infection will go up. You think it'll stay the same? I think to say it's gonna go through the roof is an understatement. Uh, <laughs> it's not. It's not gonna look very good. Is all I'm gonna say. And like the way I see it playing out, because. I don't know about you, right? But let's just say ID badges, for instance. And I'm talking about my school. When we were actually on campus, how often were those ID badge, uh, like... Lanyards? You know, yeah, like the lanyards. How Were they enforced at your school? Well, mostly. Some teachers really cared. Some teachers didn't at all. Kind of 50-50 yeah. if you walk in the class that when you're done, whether they call you out. So For me, it was like a 25% chance that the teacher actually cared. And then the other, like, 75 um, just did not care uh, if you're wearing a lanyard, or, a lanyard or not. And, like, even if it's 50-50, you still have, like, what, half the teachers who aren't enforcing something like a lanyard thing. And, there have and been- I... There have been weeks of the the reopening plan that make it seem that teachers can't actually force you to wear masks in their classroom, as long as you are seated. All right, <laughs> is that actually one of the exceptions? That is that is, yeah. I think you can just say you're uncomfortable while wearing a mask at a seat, and teachers can <laughs> like always force you. You're kidding me. Although we will, we will get confirmation on this of uh, as of tomorrow. Yeah, that's true. There's time. There's a one-hour conference on the reopening plans. I think, honestly, I think a majority of students are still going to stay online. I don't know how many students are actually going to like go back. Especially considering when we when we go back, what the plan is isn't even like... It's not like, okay, we're back to normal schooling. It's more like there's one teacher in front of... I don't know, like, one of the examples one of my teachers said today, like, some 67 students, which sounds like hyperbole, but I don't know. Um, And they're just, like, supervising them, and they're all going to online classes anyways. And it just seems like more of a distracting environment to do online schooling, because, like, you know, the kid next to you is doing, like, pre-calculus or something, and then you're trying to take a test for, like, a... I don't know, an entirely different class. Yeah. So, <laughs> so other things I've seen have been indicating that there's going to be holding large numbers of people in like what would normally be testing centers for the school, like gymnasiums. Mm-hmm. So it's just going to be like different, and they're going to try and mix kids who don't want to go back. But at least for my school or in Pompano, 50-50 mix is back to school or no back to school. It's very even spread really? among who wants to go back or not. Although really? most of the people who want to go back do want masks to be mandatory, but the it doesn't seem yeah. like they're going to enforce that so far. Yeah, so it's not even like the teachers are supposed to, or like, you know, administrators, teachers, whatever. It's not like the staff is supposed to um, enforce it. It's just they don't have to. Like they, Well, they can't, really, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, well, it's kind of just legal issues at that point, I guess, you could say. Yeah, I I feel like there's enough evidence pointing to, like, pointing to saying, like, you know, even if you're slightly uncomfortable, just wear a mask. Um, especially if you're going back to an environment like that, that, that seems ridiculous to not wear a mask. There's also been rumors of students having to self-sanitize their learning stations, meaning right before class starts. <laughs> Wipe down your desk with a bag of cor with the Corox bottle you carry around in your backpack. That's not. 
I, I, I also don't see the ending very well, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I kids see... don't throw pencils away when they almost strip over them in the hallways. Yeah. Um, <laughs> most students don't, like, honestly, they just don't care about, you know, keeping their environment sanitary. Um, I, I think we, we both went to the same middle school. And I know I'm talking about, like, the bathroom, but, like, Yikes. just to give an example. We did not, I don't know if you remember this, but we did not have soap in the dispensers for, oh, no. like, the, like uh, the last half of the year. Was it two years? 50-50 like chance you find soap in one of the dispensers of any given bathroom. Yeah. And, and in all fairness, that's not necessarily, like, the student's fault. Like, that's more on the school's fault. But also, like, and again, this is something the school should have probably fixed but you know I, I don't know how it happened but half the locks were like damaged and then I remember there was this thing at least in the middle school I went to before Crystal Lake I don't remember I, can I say that yeah I can right yeah. um um like kids would just wet like napkins or towels or whatever or, like paper towels and just toss them at the roof just stick and like like it was the most like the point i'm trying to make is like yeah like it was the most unsanitary environment and like yeah classes were more sanitary but that's i think because the teachers generally did most of it um the students are not very good at keeping even their like immediate area sanitary unless I, i'm that's a huge generalization because obviously you have like not necessarily just like germaphobic people but like yeah, people who actually care about keeping the area clean. Um, I, I don't know if that's like a 50-50 or not. I couldn't say anything on numbers, but I know, I, yeah. But one thing I'm most concerned about is uh, like pop population during transitions. How are they going to, are they going to have to stagger that? Or are we just going to have 400, 500 kids all trying to cram down the same hallways during the middle of a in the six feet apart pandemic where they can't wear oh, yeah, masks. True. Yeah, I... How how would they do that? Well, if they're going with or... the massive warning centers, there probably wouldn't be much movement throughout the day. You might just stay with one teacher the entire day or the teachers will rotate uh, in the classrooms. True. Yeah, because, again, like, what they proposed, or well, what I know of, like, what they proposed is that there would be one teacher, like, overseeing everything. And then all the students would just still be doing online classes. Yeah. So, yeah, there, like you said, there wouldn't be much movement. That'd still be a really slow process. Are they doing, like, temperature checks? Well, That's... there's no no news on that yet that I've seen. But I, what I am also really concerned about is uh, just elementary schools in general. I feel oh. like those should still stay completely virtual, but it's like a really important part of a kid's education so it's kind of hard to do that yeah you know, um, kids that age have no concept of personal space touch everything yeah i it, like reintegration during a period where like yeah we understand more about the coronavirus but we're still kind of like uncertain of how we can like, I guess, identify it. it. It's not a good time to reintegrate, I think, especially for schools. And like, it's not just hard for the students. It's going to be hard for the staff. It's going to be hard for the teachers. It's going to be hard for administrators. It's going to be hard for, like, like, every facet that is involved in running the school or is involved with the school is just going to have issues or is going to suffer because of this. And then, again, there's also the worry of, like, you know, the, um, what is it, like, the, like, shortage of teachers, because teachers who can retire are just going to retire. Because, like, well, if I can get out of here, I might as well just, you know, I might as well take that. <laughs>